Okay. <clears throat> so a quick revisit to first order equations. So dy over dx plus p of xy equals some function f of x. Now, the solution for this differential equation, the general solution in fact, same idea as we did uh, in this unit, complementary plus particular. Complementary solution, you can do the integrating factor and do all that. We're not going to do every step, but you can verify that this would be the complementary solution. And the particular solution is going to be e to the minus integral of p of x dx times the integral of e to the integral of p of x dx times f of x dx. And we can, again, you can do this yourselves and verify it, but the point we're trying to make here, if this is the complementary solution, this is the particular solution, the fact is that the particular solution could also be thought of as kind of a multiple of this complementary solution. Because if you look carefully, this is essentially your y sub c, your complementary function. And then here's this other goofy function, right? Well, we're going to call that u1. So maybe we can call it u. It's actually kind of like what we did earlier. Very similar to what we did when we were finding a second solution given 1. Okay. So using that same idea from 4.2, reduction of order, We'll start with same equation, y prime plus p of x, y equals some function f of x with y1 equal to c1e to the integral of p of x minus integral of p of x dx. So this is a known solution. And what, we'll, what we're going to do is this. We're going to find the particular solution and we're going to model it from this principle that the particular solution is going to be our complementary function times some other function in terms of x. Okay. So we'll call this, this is our variable parameter, we'll call it u1. And then we'll say that that's just y1. So very much like reduction of order. And we're going to go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. So the first order derivative, since these are both functions in terms of x, potentially, we're going to do the product rule. So that'll be u1 prime y1 plus u1 y1 prime, which implies that our original Diffie Q equals u1 prime y1 plus u1 y1 prime 
plus, now we have p of x times y. So I'm just going to call it p, and then our y is our particular solution for y, so u1, y1. Okay? And that that has to equal f of x. So if this is our particular solution, once I take the derivative and plug it in to the left-hand side, you get something that looks like this, and that should equal the right-hand side, which is our f of x. So now what we can do, if we factor out u1, we get y1 prime plus py1 plus our original first term, u1 y, or u1 prime y1, and that should equal f of x. And now, you've seen this happen a lot, I hope. What does this equal? This part right here. What does this look like? looks like the original, it does, it does equal f of x, but if it's also the complementary solution, right, that means that what? This is equal to zero. Since this is not the particular solution, it's not going to equal f of x. It kind of looks like f of x, right? But since this is the complementary solution, y1, right? y1 is found by making it homogeneous, which means that the function is equal to 0. Does that make sense? So then this is what we get when we plug y1 into it. So if this equals 0, then all we have is this. So could we find u1? Just divide by y1. And then, take the integral of both sides, and there's your solution for u1. So then, the particular solution in this instance, which is u1, y1, is just y1 times, and I'll put this over here, the integral of f of x over y1, which is also in terms of x, possibly, but okay. All right. Now, we're not going to do this way, or this method, obviously. We're going to come up with a nice method that we can use, and we'll kind of start the derivation for it, for it here. And we're going to start with second order equations. So if it's second order, getting it in the usual format with the coefficient in the front being equal to 1, Okay, so we know what here, or what should we know? Our goal here is to find the particular solution. So we should be able to make this homogeneous, right? Find the complementary solution, which would have how many functions? two because it's second order. So we know that y1 and y2 are solutions. So that y sub p instead of now being u1 y1 should be what? What format should it have? 
variable parameter for y1, superposition, variable parameter for y2. This is our goal. We want to find y sub p based on this scenario. And maybe this is a good place to stop. Okay, so tomorrow we will plug it into the equation. We will come up with a formula that will help us find these variable parameters quite quickly. The nice thing about this method is that this will always work. The annihilator method only works if what? What kinds of functions can you annihilate? 